Los Angeles, California. Charles Bukowski has been living as a barfly and a drunk for a great many years. He tried kicking the sauce by starting to play the horses, but got bitten by the gambling bug on top of his drinking. So in the end, he was left with two vices instead of just the initial one. For the last 20 years, he's been working, drinking, gambling, but maybe most important of all, he's been writing. He's 50 years old, but has been writing poems and short stories with great intensity and dedication for decades, finding his style, finding his voice. Things seem bleak at the moment. He's getting older and there seems little hope of success in life. But then again, that's how things have always been. So he keeps pushing forward. Then John Martin, the founder of Black Sparrow Press, calls him. He tells Bukowski that he loves his poems but that it's 1969. The tides are changing and now novels are all the buzz. Bukowski tells him that he'd love to write a novel, but that he needs to work. He needs money, which leaves little to no time for writing. John Martin asks him how much money does he need each month in order to survive. Bukowski gives him a sum that Martin is barely able to believe. He agrees to it immediately and tells Bukowski that he is going to pay him to write. From this moment on, until the end of Bukowski's life, he is going to pay him to write. Suddenly Bukowski finds himself in a position as a full-time writer. He opens another beer and does what he does best, drinks. The writing is a close second and will come soon enough. Greetings and welcome to House of Words, a podcast about writers, authors, and the reckless. I am your host, Jason Nemore Hardin, and today we're talking about Charles Bukowski's debut novel, Post Office, and the long road through hell it took for him to get there. Quote, sometimes you climb out of bed in the morning and you think, I'm not going to make it. But you laugh inside, remembering all the times you felt that way. End quote. The novel Post Office takes place in Los Angeles, California, the same place Bukowski's own life took place. In the book, we follow Henry Chanaski, a substitute mail carrier, as he lives the life of a drunk, meeting new women and having new experiences every day. Sometimes he wins at the horse track and is able to afford himself some form of luxury. He drifts from place to place, emptying bottles, relationships, and life itself with tragic humor and a cynical view of the world. It doesn't take a lot to see that this novel, like most of Mukowski's works, is highly biographical. He exaggerates at times, but most of what happens are things that appear to have happened to Bukowski himself. Maybe he realized that life was absurd and tragic enough, eliminating the need of much additional fiction to be added. Charles Bukowski was born at 10 p.m. on August 16, 1920, in the rented apartment his parents had at the corner of Aktienstrasse in Andernach, Germany. Bukowski's parents, Henry Charles Bukowski, or Heinrich Karl Bukowski in German and Katharina Fett, met in Andernach and after a short time of dating became pregnant. Despite Bukowski's tendency to state that he was born a bastard as he was born out of wedlock, this is actually untrue. Records from Andernach show that his father and mother married on July 15, 1920, only slightly before Bukowski was born but in time nevertheless. He was baptized and given the name of his father, Heinrich Karl Bukowski. They soon moved to the U.S. where Katharina took the more English-sounding name Kate and little Heinrich became Henry as his father. They also changed the pronunciation of their surname from Bukowski to Bukowski. The family started out in Baltimore, Maryland but soon relocated to California, where Charles Bukowski would live his turbulent life and subsequently write about it. 
His parents were far from what Bukowski needed growing up. His father was stern and often abusive, while his mother was submissive and condoned her husband's disciplinary style, meaning Bukowski found little solace, if any, at home. He struggled through adolescence with the most aggressive case of acne his doctor had ever seen. It was all over his body, even on the inside of his mouth, something that hindered much of his emotional and physical exploration through puberty. He never had a girlfriend before his adult years, but had begun dabbling with alcohol as early as age 12, an addiction that would last him a lifetime. Before he was captivated by writing, alcohol would find its way into his spirit. Emotionally fragile after the brutal treatment from his father, it wasn't hard for him to find solace in alcohol. A friend of his brought him to the cellar of his house, where his father had several barrels of wine. The friend told him that his father had quit drinking and now the barrels just stood there. Bukowski didn't want to try to begin with, but his friend dared him, and not willing to be seen as a coward, he caved in. The first sip was awful. It tasted horrible, but after drinking a good amount, he felt a great confidence and more important, he felt unafraid. Immediately, he knew that he had found something that would help him for a long time, and a few years later, he would find the power of literature. Quote, Some people never go crazy. What truly horrible lives they must lead. End quote. He hadn't made anything out of his years in school, mostly flunking out of different courses, but then he found his sanctuary, the Los Angeles Public Library. Bukowski was often downtown looking for a job, more often than not, not finding any, and while there he would go to the library and read books. He loved the library, the endless option of books for him to escape into, and there were even girls to peek at there. One day he found something he referred to as discovering gold in a city dump. This was John Fonte's novel, Ask the Dust. The hero of the novel, Arturo Bandini, is a 21-year-old would-be writer, the son of immigrant parents, who feels cut off from society. Bukowski identified with him almost immediately. Later describing Fonte's effect on him, Bukowski wrote, Fonte was my god. He was to be a lifelong influence of my writing. 1941, Bukowski was 21 years old. He couldn't hold down a job. He failed to succeed at school and was veering more and more towards heavier drinking and writing, both of which his father disapproved of and often the reason for their arguments, confrontations, and fights. Tired of his parents, tired of life in Los Angeles, he felt he needed to get away. After menial work for six months, he set out to explore America so he could write about the real world of rooming houses, factory jobs, and bars, like his hero Fonte had done. In his travels through New Orleans and Atlanta, he wrote continuously and passionately and sent the stories to magazine after magazine, but all he got were rejections. When he began to run out of money, he tried to live on candy bars to postpone having to get another job as that would take time away from his writing. After more struggling and by then sick with hunger, he wrote his father asking him for money. As expected, though he had hoped for some sympathy, he was admonished instead. Bukowski considered suicide. He considered touching a live wire and ending it all. But writing kept him going. When he had no paper left and felt no hope or solace from anything, he noticed a blank margin on a newspaper he had and began writing in them. That's when he realized he was, in fact, a writer. Even though no one had read what he had written, he felt the need to write, which proved to him that he was a writer, which is what he needed to keep going. He found work and ways to survive as he continued on his travels, 
reading and writing as much as he could between dead-end jobs. He found his way to San Francisco and found work driving a truck for Red Cross. Around this time, all he did was work, write stories, and drink as much as possible, and was amassing eight to ten stories a week. He learned to make it on his own. His first paid writing gig was a letdown. He submitted his story, Aftermath of a Lengthy Rejection Slip, to a magazine he had been rejected by earlier and received $25 for it. The disappointment came after the magazine was on stands. Excited, Bukowski bought a copy only to find out that his story wasn't a part of the main body of the magazine with the other stories. Rather, it had been placed at the end pages as a novelty item. He felt like he had been made a fool of. But one positive thing came out of it at least. When he had sent in the story, he had dropped his first name, Henry, because it reminded him too much of his father. And from then on, he officially took the name he would be known for by the rest of his life, Charles Bukowski. He tried to live in New York for a while, but found it too cold. He then moved to Philadelphia because it was called the city of brotherly love, but found out the contrary was true when you were a barfly. Bukowski would claim that for the next 10 years of his life, he abandoned writing to be a full-time barfly. However, this is not true, as there is evidence that he continued to write short stories and submit these to magazines in this period. Later, Bukowski would find poetry and dive into it without restraint. He was productive and began sending out poems to all magazines that would accept them. Then more magazines began to publish his work and would pay him for his writing. Slowly but surely, he was gaining traction, though the progress would be painfully slow. When Bukowski was 30 years old, he began working for the post office as a temporary carrier for two weeks over Christmas in 1950. As he would later begin the novel Post Office, more than 20 years later, it did begin as a mistake. A drunk told Bukowski that the post office would practically hire anyone around Christmas, so he tried his luck. Fifteen months later, he was taken on as a full-time carrier at $1.61 an hour. He would later be upgraded to work with sorting letters, a job he would keep up until his career as a writer took over. Quote, If you're going to try, go all the way. Otherwise, don't even start. This could mean losing girlfriends, wives, relatives, and maybe even your mind. It could mean not eating for three or four days. It could mean freezing on a park bench. It could mean jail. It could mean derision. It could mean mockery. Isolation. Isolation is the gift. All others are a test of your endurance, of how much you really want to do it. End quote. It was in December 1969 that John Martin, who had founded Black Sparrow Press in order to publish Bukowski specifically, called Bukowski up. He loved the poems he had read from Bukowski, but understood that the money wasn't in publishing a collection of poems, since it wasn't very big at the time. John Martin offered Bukowski $100 a month for life, equivalent of $720 today on the condition that Bukowski would quit his post office job and write full-time for Black Sparrow. The $100 were based on what Bukowski told him was the minimum he could live on. Within those $100, he had enough money for rent, child support, drink, cigarettes, and some food. Bukowski agreed to the conditions and got to drinking, then began writing. As stated earlier, Bukowski was 50 years old at the time but he felt a new invigoration as he could finally make a living out of writing. It would be a meager living, but a living nonetheless. He felt like he was finally going to get a novel published. At the end of his final workday, Bukowski wished everyone at the post office such a casual goodbye that the clerks were sure that he was just leaving for yet another night. That set well with Bukowski, as he didn't want a big fuss around him leaving. The first few days of true freedom were spent in total and utter inebriation. 
On his way home from his last day at work, he stopped by Ned's where he bought beer and got royally drunk. About this experience, Bukowski wrote, After living in the cage, I had taken the opening and flown out like a shot into the heavens. For the rest of December, he would call up friends over to his bungalow and they would get drunk and party. Then, as the new year rolled around, he threw all guests out, locked the door, and got down to business. He began the novel on the afternoon of January 2nd, 1970. That was the day Bukowski sat down by his typewriter, of the brand Royal, and typed out the first words of the novel. It began as a mistake. He worked on the novel day and night over the next three weeks, barely leaving his bungalow as he wrote about his own life. His work, his drinking, his marriages, the chaos of his life, through the narration of his protagonist, Henry Chanaski. He took much inspiration from his experience with his first true love, Jane Cooney Baker, Betty in the novel, and her death. Jane was a widowed alcoholic, 11 years Bukowski's senior when they met when Bukowski was 27 years old. She was the first serious girlfriend he had ever had, and the second woman he ever had sex with. Also included in the novel is his marriage to Barbara Fry and their trip to Texas and buying a new 57 Plymouth, the same which was now in the driveway, sporting rust around the door sill and with dead leaves on the windscreen. His habit was, like it had been all his life up to that point, drink while writing and stop when you can't write anything legible anymore. He liked best to drink beer while writing at this period in his life. Hard liquor would get one drunk too fast, making one unable to write a lot before the alcohol took over. But with beer, you could go on for hours. When he was finished with the novel, he went through it, crossing out mistakes and tightening sentences. Then he needed a title, so he wrote a list. His first idea was Six Pack No Scheme, but he soon whittled it down to his favorites. Twelve Years Gone, Death of Betty, and Postal News were his favorites, but they didn't quite do the trick. Then it came to him. Post Office. He immediately called up John Martin, who was astonished that Bukowski had managed to write a novel for him that fast. Post Office was published in February of 1971, and the success of the novel made it so that Bukowski would have to start doing readings, something he dreaded and would therefore drink himself into a stupor before he would even get up on stage. These readings would later become infamous and would gain more an atmosphere of a concert or a stand-up performance, with hecklers and all. By all accounts, Post Office wasn't a bestseller, but it was a good introduction into what would come. Bukowski, despite his age and despite his lifestyle, was just getting started. Although he finished post office at a remarkable speed, Bukowski didn't reward himself with leisure time or a break. Instead, he felt compelled to write as much and as often as he could, as this was now his full-time job. He was able to live on $100 a month, but he wanted more. Not only money, but recognition. He allowed only a few weeks to pass before he began planning a second novel called, at that stage, The Horse Player. With a steady paycheck from Black Sparrow Publishing, his novel out and doing readings and drinking came women and a life he had long longed for. The novel, The Horse Player, would later become his sophomore novel, Factotum. Before we reach the end of this episode, I would like to give some words of inspiration to any aspiring writers out there. Charles Bukowski was 50 years old when Post Office, his first novel, was published. If he was able to grind and suffer and write and drink for about 30 years before he made it, so can you. Don't lose hope. Just crack open another bottle of good German wine or a beer and keep at it. And finally, let me leave you these words from Bukowski himself. There is nothing more magic and beautiful than lines forming across paper. It's all there is. It's all there ever was. Thank you for listening. 
I hope you enjoyed this episode and will spread the word about the podcast. Once again, I am your host, Jason Nemoa Hardin, and I kindly ask you to please consider making this show easier to produce and more frequent by contributing on our Patreon page. Until next time, keep turning those pages.